Hi folks, uh, today we're talking about wheat and wheat related problems as it relates to the digestive tract. As you know, uh, we all love wheat uh, because both from the nutrition aspect, taste aspect and the doughy aspect of it, it lends itself to a lot of food products. In a very small percentage of people, it can however cause digestive problems and that's what I want to cover today. Every year in the world, we consume about 750 million tons of wheat. In wheat itself, there's three subgroups that can cause digestive problems. One is a gluten protein. The second one is what we call alpha amylase. And the third one is a group called FODMAPs. FODMAPs are substances that are not absorbed and then fermented by bacteria in the gut and can cause a problem. So here's where we get into the meat of the problem. The first problem that wheat can cause is a problem called celiac disease. Celiac disease is a condition where the body's own immune system, which normally fights off infections, it starts attacking gluten as a foreign substance and that happens at the interface of the gut lining. When this happens, that lining starts shrinking and I have a slide in there that shows you how the lining starts becoming balder and balder, causing many different problems of absorption. Celiac disease can cause problems of absorption of substances. It can cause diarrhea, various gut symptoms, and I have a slide in there for you to refer to uh, for more information. In addition, it can cause symptoms and uh, problems in other areas of the body, including joint aches, etc. The test for this can be a blood test as a starting point and endoscopy where we go in through the mouth and take pieces of the tissue and look at it is a confirmatory uh, way to diagnose it. The second group of problems that we see is a condition called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. We are finding out more about this problem as we study it in the last few years. So therefore it's not celiac disease but it's a condition where the immune system to a lesser level starts causing problems. In this, occasionally a blood test can be positive, which is called gliadin, but it's more a diagnosis that we can make based on symptom correlation. The, here too, the immune system is attacking certain proteins in wheat. The last condition is called wheat, just plain wheat allergy. It can be two forms. One is what we know as Baker's asthma, where just by inhalation of wheat flour, you can get an asthma attack. The second aspect of it is a condition where after exercise, after one has consumed a meal which has wheat in it, you can get an asthma attack of shortness of breath. Within this group also, there's a condition where the minute we ingest wheat, you can get immediate symptoms of gut ache, diarrhea, etc., which is within 15 minutes. And this is truly a form of allergy. And sometimes this can be diagnosed by means of a blood test as well as a skin test. In all of this, if you diagnose this, the best way to eliminate this is to avoid wheat-related products, which can be challenging. For more information on this, please visit our website and look up the slides that I've posted. Uh, this will give you a little deeper dive. If you have further questions on this, please contact us and we'd be glad to talk to you.